Chris from Good Roads. I'm back down in the dungeon with our completed skateboard press, and the next thing we need in order to make skateboards is a mold. For a press like this, we need a two-part mold, which means we've got a bottom half and a top half. We can put veneer and glue in between those two halves, clamp them together, and when the glue cures, all of our curves go into the wood where we want them. So a little while back, I made a one-part skateboard mold using a 3D printed shell that I then infilled with plaster. And there were some things about that that worked way better than I expected, and there were some things that can be improved upon. So right now, I'm going to show you the second version of the 3D printed skateboard mold. And here it is! Aside from the obvious difference of it being a two-part mold instead of a one-part mold, there were a number of small little changes that I made in order to make making boards easier. And I'm going to walk you through what I've done and how I think it's going to help. The first thing that I wanted to address and improve on from the last version was that the shells were really flexible. So I figured out a way to still print in vase mode, but get some internal structure that gives us these, these ribs in the long direction of the board so that they should retain their shape better when we infill it with plaster. Along with that, the last mold was held together just by super gluing all the parts to a wooden base, and I wasn't really happy with that. It also fell apart really quickly. So this time I added some cavities going through the mold that I could put threaded rod through and link the whole shell together before I infilled it with plaster. Those were the two improvements that I made in hopes of just increasing the viability of this shape as a mold. But there were a couple other things that I added hoping to make it easier to make skateboards. And here's what they are. One of the things that I added was alignment. I've got these extra printed parts bolted onto the end in the bottom half of the mold those parts contain some PVC pipe, which I've rounded over the ends of, give it a little bit of a chamfer, and in the top half of the mold, those parts are uh, funneled a bit. But what happens is when you put the top half of the mold on the bottom half of the mold, that pipe and those pieces keep the mold halves aligned perfectly. So I never have to worry about the mold misaligning. All the curves in the top and bottom half of the molds will line up perfectly and should give us a really good, even, consistent pressure to make it much easier to make the same board over and over again, which is the whole point of doing it this way instead of other ways. Another idea that I had in service of that same goal was to integrate bolt hole drilling guides into the mold itself. This way, when I press a deck and pull it out, I don't have to worry about keeping a center line. I don't have to worry about the bolt holes getting misaligned. Before I even take the blank out of the mold, I can just drop the drill down, drill out my bolt holes, and it should be good to go. And I'm hoping that the same way that I'm using these PVC pipes as kind of alignment in the molds, that I'll be able to use the pre-drilled bolt holes for alignment and registration on the blanks when I go to shape the board. So. That's kind of my thinking there. And that's all the updates to the system that I've made for this new second set of 3D printed molds. This set of molds is for a mini deck, like a penny style, or actually it's closer to their nickel. It's a 22 inch skateboard for six inch trucks. It's got a pretty long wheelbase for that actually, I got right up close to the nose. I went with a smaller board, because a smaller board means a smaller mold, it means smaller veneers, all of that means less material as I'm experimenting and iterating. And once I've got my system kind of worked out, then I'll graduate up to some larger decks. So, let's cut some veneer and press a board. The materials for this board are going to be a combination of Baltic birch and rock maple. The stack, in order from bottom to the top, is going to be a, a dyed black long grain maple veneer, two sheets of eighth inch Baltic birch plywood, which is going to have our cross grains inside of it because an eighth inch sheet has got four veneers in it, four layers and then a plain maple face veneer on the top. Gluing it together with Type Bond 3, which is a nice resilient glue. And we're gonna make sure that the layers are nicely aligned. We're gonna slide it into the mold, and flip the switch. And just like that, the layers are pressed, the glue is dripping out, and all there is that's left to do is to wait till tomorrow when everything's all cured up and pull the blank out of the mold.
Oh no, <laughs> they're too deep? What? Get out of here with that. Get out of here with that. Cool. We do. That looks like a skateboard. <laughs> Curves. Curves. Woo! Look at that. Look at that. You see that? You see that belly? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. So there you have it. We got a blank for a mini. This is really exciting. We've got our kicktail. We've got the concave. All the shapes that were in the mold are in the deck exactly where we want them. We've got pre-drilled bolt holes and they will always come out the same and we can use them for registration so make sure we always are cutting out the same shape. It's very exciting stuff. There are a couple things that came up during the process that I definitely need to address though. I need to reinforce the press. When I tested the press, the mold that I used to test it was basically the whole size of the press. This is a much smaller mold. Concentrating all that pressure in such a small area resulted in a higher pounds per square inch. So it bowed the frame in both directions, bowed it a little bit this way, which I kind of expected, but it really bowed it side to side. Side to side, you can't see that arc. Super bent. Same thing on this side. Really arced. And then if you look down the length of the press, it's bowed in the middle this way too. I hope it doesn't permanently damage it. It might have though. <laughs> these these might be pretty pretty good and bent there. Shoot. That was super surprising, and I think that my stave and um oh my god, it's so bent. <laughs> I think that my stave and spar system was just not as rigid as I was expecting it to be. I've got some ideas on how to fix that. All that said, the mold worked perfectly. The corners of the mold got crushed down a little bit because the surface that it was getting pushed up against was curved, effectively. Uh, so I may consider swapping out the fill material for concrete in the future, and I also thought about doing some chopped fiber, uh, some chopped fiberglass mixed in with the plaster so it's got a little bit more internal strength. That said, I'm not married to either of those materials, and if you've got any ideas about what I could use to fill these shells in better that's going to be easy to pour, strong, not crushed down, I'd be happy to hear it because I'm pretty sure there's something out there and I just don't know what it is. This is super exciting because a lot of the updates that I made worked really well, and from here I can continue to develop the mold system. But I also learned a lot in the process, and I've got a lot of things to work on going forward, which is just... Who doesn't like making stuff? This is going to be great. Here are my options going forward. These are all things that are going to need to be tackled eventually, but what I need to do is reinforce the press. I've already got some ideas about how I might do that, how I might address the uh, rigidness of at least the top portion. The bottom plate didn't seem to have the same amount of trouble, which isn't surprising because the presses themselves are basically just big box tubes. The only weak spots are there and on the ends, but we'll reinforce the top part of this so that we're not constantly bending it and eventually breaking or shaking parts loose, so that'll be good. I can continue to develop the 3D printed mold system. I think I can probably integrate the alignment straight into the mold body so it doesn't have to be attached as a separate piece. It'd be nice to have handles to pick up the halves because right now I'm just kind of squeezing my fingers in there and I want to experiment with different film materials. And then the last and probably the most interesting, most fun part of it is I get to figure out a way to add graphics to the bottom of this deck and then figure out how to shape it. Now this first one, I'll probably shape it one off. I won't come up with a system to make the same shape over and over again. And from this first finished version of this, this geometry, let's call it, I'll be able to learn whether or not I like the shape that I have planned and figure out what about it needs to change. And once I've got that locked down pretty well, I will come up with some sort of template system so I can make multiples of them. However, even on this first version of this shape, I do wanna start thinking about how I can come up with a graphic or a system of making graphics where I can make kind of the same graphic over and over again. So all those different areas of content are going to be things that we're going to be tackling going forward. Reinforcing the press, continuing to develop a system of reusable 3D printed parametric molds, and developing my first shape, my first deck, my first set of graphics. That's pretty exciting. I hope you stick with me for the journey, because I'm excited about it and I think it's going to be a fun one. I'll see you soon. Hey.
baby, why aren't you turning? What? What? <laughs> what What the heck, man? You stuck? You're not even making noise like you're stuck. Oh, please don't be dead. There we go. That was just stuck. Okay. And the other is to... At... God, there's so many sirens. What the hell happened? Someone on fire? This has got to be a fire. Or a shooting. Are you just circling the block? Ambulance. Fire truck. Cops. Fire. It's got to be a fire.